Today we're going to be doing a custom of these off-brand Nike Jordan 1s. I got them off Boohoo Man because they were hella cheap and when I saw them I thought they were a perfect blank canvas for me to do a custom on. First off I'm going to start by doing a rough sketch of some different angles of the shoe so that I can plan out what I want to do with them. The front of the shoe I'm not going to change that much, I'm just going to colour in the tongue red and write my signature at the top of the tongue. For the sides of the shoe I've decided that I'm going to use my channel name which is Ak, spelled A-K-H. And again I'm going to write it in a similar style to my signature but I want to wrap it around the shoe, kind of like how the Nike swoosh wraps around the shoe. I don't know why I mark the inside of the act text to be read on the paper because it's the outside that's actually going to be read. It was probably just a mistake. Anyway, I noticed the shoes were slightly filthy on the edges so I got some antibacterial wipes to give them a quick clean but on closer inspection I realised that some of the faux leather was cut in a weird way. It looked like it had some sort of bumps in certain areas of the edge of the fabric so I decided to quickly snip off the ones I could spot. After all that's done I put in a couple of wooden shoe trees into the shoe so that it keeps its structure as I'm going to be applying paint onto it. After a quick unlacing of the shoes it's time to prep the shoes for painting. You can do this like I am using some cotton wool and some acetone in the form of a nail polish remover or you could use a leather deglazer which is apparently supposed to be a safe option to use for shoes. Before you start painting the shoe it's always a smart move to tape off the areas that you don't want to get paint on. For me it was the midsole of the shoe. Some people are skilled enough to just start painting on the shoe straight away. I haven't done much art in a few years so I'm really rusty with my line work and that's why I decided to start it by going over the shoe in a pencil outline first. I'm just using a normal HB pencil by the way, rest in peace will worse. I'd recommend you to do so too just so you know where you need to paint if you're doing off the fly. So I'm going to make the act text on both sides and also pencil in my signature on the top of the tongue as well very lightly. For the painting process I'm going to be using a smallish size paintbrush and some Angelus red acrylic leather paint. As you saw in the drawing earlier I'm going to be using the colours black, white and red and I'm going to be keeping the inside of the Actex white and paint around it in red. I start off by painting the outsides very carefully, taking my time. There's no point rushing it and making a mistake because you're just going to create more work for yourself trying to fix it or even ruin the thing altogether. So I'm doing like two to three coats of the red so that you can't see the white colour of the faux leather underneath. While I'm doing this I'm trying to leave some extra space where the white bit of the text is supposed to be just in case I end up painting with too much red and make the act text or end up looking too thin. It's kind of like when you go to the barbers you will get your hair cut and your barber chops off too much. You can't do anything about that. But if your barber chops off less than what you wanted, you can still chop off more of your hair afterwards to get your desired hair length. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, now to do the front of the shoe. Originally, I was going to paint the whole front of the white area of the shoe red. But after looking at the shoe for a bit, I realized that the colors will be more balanced if I left the toe box white and painted the rest of the tongue red. So I taped up the end of the white section and proceeded to paint the rest of it red except for the area where I wanted my signature to be. I originally planned my signature to be white but I kind of flopped the outline so I just made the decision to keep going and fill out my signature in black instead. And for this I just used a black sharpie to go over it a few times to make the lettering nice and thick and I think it came out pretty good. Since I had the black sharpie out I also decided to outline the act text I have on my sides too just so the lines were look a bit cleaner and make the text pop a bit more and I'm glad I did because it seems to give the text a bit more depth so it's not too plain looking. After hitting the shoe with the heat gun and letting it dry I then used some Angelus matte finisher on top of the areas I painted just so it wouldn't look too shiny because of the paint and so the paint doesn't get scratched off if the shoe gets nicked. Now after lacing these babies back up you can see how the first finished shoe looks like. I think I made the right decision leaving the toe box white as the colours are very balanced on this shoe now. And here's a quick comparison to the other shoe for how the shoe originally looked like versus what it looks like now. Alright so for the next shoe we're going to be taking a different approach. Initially I was thinking to do the exact same design for each shoe but I wanted to try a little mismatch thing since it would probably make it look a bit more interesting. So instead of putting Ack on both sides again I decided to draw out the rest of my channel name which is lifestyle. It's one word which is composed of two words combined together and because of that I decided to write one word on each side of the shoe and what would make this even better is if I joined up the letters so that the white text wraps around the shoe just like the Nike swoosh does. Kind of similar to how I designed my other pair. So I planned out with joined up handwriting how I'm going to draw it on paper first 
and then went on to do it to the actual shoe. This one was a bit more tricky. For the other shoe, I was mostly working with straight lines, but with this one, there's a lot of curves, so I need to pay more attention in making the curves not too sudden and making the text balanced and a decent size as well. The side where I was drawing the life text was alright, but the style side was a bit more tricky. I kept redoing the S because I, it didn't really seem right to me. But eventually, I just decided to stick with it so I could move on to the painting process. However, with this shoe, I decided to switch up and use the Sharpie first to outline where I wanted the text to be and then paint the red paint on afterwards. As I mentioned before, I'm a bit rusty so I had to go a bit slow and I think that caused the line work to not look as clean as it could have been but it was good enough. The other side of the shoe though, it was going well initially but I messed up when connecting the curve of the S and it looks like there was a thick dot on the text. Luckily, this is the inside of the medial part of the shoe so it's not going to be seen as much. I also realised why the S letter was looking a bit off to me. Firstly, the kerning was a bit off meaning the S should have been a bit closer to the T and secondly, none of the letters of the rest of the text have letters overlapping themselves except for the S and that's why it looked a bit like the odd one out in this case. However, I wouldn't have really been able to do the joint up S the same style as the other lettering because it would just end up looking like a weird 8. So it's probably the best I could have done in this style anyway unless you guys have any other ideas of what I could have done. Now it's finally time to paint the shoe. Again, tape up the midsole so that none of the paint bleeds onto it accidentally and we can go to town with the red paint. This time I'm using a slightly smaller brush for the detailing as it was a bit difficult to do that with the other size paintbrush and I'm just using the brush that is built in within the red paint container to go over the larger areas that need paint. Again, I'm going to do like two to three coats with this paint so that you can't see any of the whites underneath I do initially forget to colour in one of the holes of the F but don't worry I fill that in eventually. I don't know about you but after applying the red paint to this side it kinda reminds me of the Lego logo because of the colour and the curvy lettering. Okay so that's the lateral side of the shoe fully painted. Next to finish off the medial side. Oh and the scotch tape I was using yeah it was a bit weird it kept wanting to peel off. I thought I bought a couple of good quality rolls from the Angels website but it seemed like it didn't want to stick for some reason so I had to be extra careful when doing the bottom section of the shoe. Anyways cracking on with the layers it's looking pretty good. You can see how the tape is kind of peeling off as well but anyway I push on with applying the final coats using both paint brushes making sure I get the little details painted here and there and it ended up looking pretty nice when finished. Up close you may be able to see a couple imperfections but from far you're hardly able to notice any of them. I also kind of like how you can see the brush strokes if you look really closely. It makes it feel like it's a work of art or something. Now onto the tongue again. Since I ended up doing a black signature last time, I'm taking a different approach to this one. Instead of leaving an area white and filling it in with a black sharpie, I'm going to fill the whole tongue in with red and then do my signature on the top of it afterwards. I look at the other shoe just to make a quick reference on the tongue where I did my last signature, but when I go to do it this time, I didn't realise that I've done my signature slightly smaller. I did notice it after I completed it and had the option to paint over it and redo it, but I kinda liked how it came out though and just decided to leave it as it was a bit of a mismatched shoe anyway. Because I was excited to finish up the shoe, I fully laced it up to see how they both looked like, but I had yet to realise I forgot something. Originally, I was going to leave the red tabs of the side of the shoe plain, but they did seem a bit empty. I was wondering if I should put my channel logo on the side, but it would look a bit too busy and I wanted the focus to be on the side panels that I painted. So instead, I decided to keep it simple and write the number one on each shoe, not only to signify these are the first customs that I've ever done, but also because the shoes themselves are a lookalike of the Jordan ones. So that has sort of a double meaning. After doing that, I then realised I forgot to put the matte finisher on the second shoe. So I ended up quickly painting the sides with the matte finish and unlacing half of the shoe because I wasn't really bothered to unlace and relace the whole thing. Plus you only see the top of the tongue mainly anyway. Perhaps I'll do the bottom of the tongue another time. I also decided to hit the tab where I wrote the number one with some of the finisher as well, just so it would have the same type of shine. And finally, I was finished. The only other change I would potentially make to this in the future is to use some white paint to fix the dot mark I did around the S of style and maybe even try them out with white laces instead of black laces. What do you guys think? Would you have done anything different to this pair or a pair you're customising yourself? Feel free to leave a comment. Oh let me show you guys how these look on feet as well. I think they look pretty clean you know especially if they're paired with the right streetwear outfit. Anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this custom. There's going to be more to come. As always thanks for watching and stay blessed.